So yeah. So um, but I think we shall catch up. Eh? Um, we still have enough and the time. So today we want to look at communication. <clears throat> um, when we're dealing with ICT, we're dealing with communication. And when we're dealing with teaching and learning, it's essentially, it hinges on communication. Um, communicating either by a word or by text or images, whatever it is, we're trying to communicate something. And this is why ICT exists for the purpose of community. Well, if you look at the entire term, the, 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 the term itself, ICT looks at information, um, information and communication technology. But everything that is designed, especially the ICTs that are designed for teaching and learning, they are designed to, to enhance the communication process. So it is important we understand what the communication process is. So, so far, we have looked at uh, three uh, sections. The first we introduced as the course unit, we looked at uh, teaching models and, and choosing a technology or designing techno uh, classroom technology. So today we are looking at communication in teaching and learning. Now, the first question would be, um, what is communication? What is it? We have encountered it, we, we do it practically on a daily basis. Or we believe we are doing, we are carrying out communication in one way or another. But uh, I think many times, we probably deceive ourselves that we are communicating something. Because you may say something to somebody and the other person doesn't understand what you're saying. Or, for example, I may be speaking now, but there is poor network uh, connection on your side. And you, you may be hearing static or breaks in my speech and uh, you know things that I'm saying. Or I may think I'm sharing my screen, but maybe your screen is unable as a fault, and you're unable to see what I'm what I'm projecting to you via Zoom. So in that sense, I'm not actually communicating. But when I'm communicating, that it's not just a matter of passing on information. It is also um, my intention is to pass on a, a certain message. And my intention is to communicate certain beliefs or facts or feelings. And my intention is to persuade you to come to a certain point of view or that we get a certain common understanding between us. Now, communication may be intentional. Now, for example, now as I speak, my intention is to, 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 for us to have a common understanding of what the term communication is. That is my intention. But I may have, I may also communicate something else unintentionally. So, for example, um, like today I've had a, a bit of a long day, starting at six thirty. I was up and down. So, in my speech, I may be. I may, be, I may feel a bit tired. So you may hear something in the way I'm speaking that demonstrates that I'm tired, but though it may not be my intention to, to say it, or it may be I may have had a, a, a really bad emotional day, maybe I had a quarrel with a family member, um, you know, something is getting me down. It's not my intention to communicate it, but it may come out. The other thing about communication, it also is influenced by uh, the unintentional part that we sometimes convey is things that are influenced by our culture, by our, um, our different language uh, influences. Um, take an example, if, 
if I was um, maybe of a, a, a diff, from a different nationality from you. Uh, take an example, if I was maybe American or Chinese or Indian, a lot of the, maybe quite a number of things I may say to you may not be familiar or they, they may not come across as what you're familiar with, simply because I, I come from a different background. So in that way, I may send, they, they may intend to send something and I to, to communicate something, then I communicate something else in that way. So um, th those are some of the key things that we, we need to take note of. When, so first of all, let's go back and, and look at it. We, we are trying to convey certain information to exchange our thoughts and messages. And we do this via speech, visuals, signals, writing, our behavior. So if you take an example, if you are seeing me, you may see me move my hands as I speak. Uh, you may see my facial expressions and so on and so forth. Then uh, we also have understood that it, 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 it involves a reciprocal exchange of information and ideas, so, um, and feelings and attitudes. Eh? So it's between more and more than two people, one, two or more people. Then we have also seen that it can be intentional or unintentional. Now, when we go in depth to look at the actual structure of communication, uh, because we talked about it's done between two or more people, we realize that among them, there has to be a sender, the one who is communicating information. There should be a message and there should be a recipient. Now, other definitions that we shall see later will actually point out there's also context, um, there's also means of communication and so on and so forth. Eh? But these are the beginning basics. There's a sender, there's a message, there's a recipient. Now, uh, this communication doesn't always have to be in real time. What do I mean by real time? Right now, I'm communicating to you. This is essentially real time. You're, you're getting my message as I deliver it. Other messages may be what they call um, asynchronous. That means you, you, the way, the, when the message is sent is not necessarily when it is received. So that one is affected, affected by distance and time. Now, the communication must happen in, a, in an area, a shared commonality, or rather for, for two or more people to communicate, there must be a common platform of communication. What do I mean? If now right now I'm speaking and one of you is not an English speaker, then we don't have a common platform for communication. Or if we ask the students that please access classes via Zoom, but you don't have access to Zoom, then you don't have a common platform. Or let us say um, when you need internet and one of you doesn't have internet, then we don't have a common platform. So that is what we mean. There must be a shared, a shared communicative platform or commonality to allow the free exchange of that information. The other thing that may also affect uh, the platform may be is if, if there is animosity between the, the different parties. If there is some animosity, if there's a, a, there's, there, there is no, should I say communion, a oneness, yeah? In the group, in the people who are communicating, then you can't have communication. So you can have it. They are all they are the there's the psychosocial part, there is the the, the, the structural part we are looking at in terms of uh, the academic side that you're speaking the same language, probably in the same uh, common understanding levels of, of understanding. Then there's also the ICT part, 
all of them, the whole communication, what you would what you would have learned about communication in a physical classroom also applies in the area of ICT. Now, the communication process, this is a key point, is complete once the receiver has understood the message of the sender. So this one is quite simple. Let us say right now one of you is, is, is disconnected from this platform, maybe because their device breaks down, internet services go down. That automatically means the message has not been completed. So if it hasn't been completed, then communication has not happened. So this is a key point to remember as you think about the technologies you want to choose to use with your students, that you, you, you have a common platform that the communication process should be complete. As much as we are using ICT, we must always remember that the sender, there is a sender, there is a receiver. So the sender could at one point be a teacher, and the next time there is the teacher will be a receiver. Why? It's a circular process, it's a cycle. At one point, the, the teacher is the sender, another point, the student is the sender. In both cases, there must be a complete, complete cycle of communication. So in teaching and learning, what uh, Brown and Okay, and, and uh, what Brown and Okay state is essentially um, giving the concrete examples of what communication is in teaching and learning. So we communicate during a lecture, during a discussion, a demonstration, an explanation using visual material, whatever it is, we are communicating. Now on this slide, what we are looking at is, um, is the fact that one, the roles interchange. So you have different people communicating, playing different roles at different times. So for example, at one point, the teacher is the sender. Another time, the teacher is the receiver. At one point, the student is the sender. Another time, the student is the receiver. So it is a cycle, yeah? You realize that communication is a cycle. Any questions so far? Or any explanation or if there's any, any other point to add as far as understanding what communication is? Is clear, doctor. Okay. So now we want to look at types of communication. And if you remember the teaching models, these are very much in related. They can be um, linked back eh, to the teaching modes that we looked at previously. So um, with the types of communication, as you see on this slide, the first one is interpersonal communication, then you have group, public, and interpretive. We're going to look at each at a time. So interpersonal is essentially when you have one-on-one -on -one conversations. So this can be done in a physical space. So for example, in a, um, when you pull one student aside or that a student comes to your office and you have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Or even in a classroom where you pick one student and one student or one student decides to, to engage a, a teacher in a conversation. Now, when you think in terms of ICT, this can also be translated uh, or imitated in the field of ICT. So example, for example, you may have a conversation with a student on email. You can't have a conversation with the students on WhatsApp or in a chat, any kind of chat room, be it in WhatsApp, be it on an e-learning platform. For example, if you go to Google Classroom, if you go to Moodle, each of them has that future to have um, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with, with a student. So that is typically one-on-one -on -one, uh, 
the, the, the interpersonal um, communication. When would we have this? We would have this, let us say, um, you need to persuade somebody into a certain viewpoint or a student needs clarity on something or even the teacher themselves needs clarity on, on, on a particular issue with, a, with an individual uh, student. Uh, if you're resolving conflict, something, anything, any communication that involves one, that inv if you need to communicate something to one particular individual and not necessarily to a group of people. So take an example, maybe I give you an assignment and then I realize, oh, Julius has not submitted. Now, rather than sending, let's say to the, to the WhatsApp group or, or um, uh, to in a discussion forum, I may choose to call Julius uh, individually to ask him, hey, what happened? You haven't submitted your assignment. So that, that would involve interpersonal communication. Then we have group communication where you have um, many, many people com communicating at the same time. So here you've seen this in group discussions, um, in, in chat rooms or in collaboration. So here when, at the same time as we speak, you can already see some of the um, ICT platforms that you could use for group communication. For example, a discussion forum. Uh, Mudo has that, that uh, future. To a certain extent, so does Google Classroom. WhatsApp groups do the same. They can allow um, group discussion. So that one allows for collaboration. Yeah, that allows for collaboration. The third is public uh, communication. So public communication is essential like what we are doing now, where you have one person speaking to a, an audience. So normally we see this in church. For example, if you go to church, you have a priest, a pastor, a minister who is standing up to address the congregation. Um, when you have a village head talking to others, eh? you know, so that kind of that kind of communication. So, um, so that is a lecture type of, of communication. So also this has its place eh, in the communication process. I, I found out, for example, um, for me, one of the, the, the best examples I can give where this kind of communication, which I've, I've experienced, eh, um, is when I'm listening to a, a person who is particularly an expert on a particular topic. Now I know in teaching and learning, we, 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 the, the, there is the, the, there is the, the the new thinking, the new theory that uh, students, when they come to class, they are not empty heads. Eh? Uh, so they, you can begin with the students revealing what they do know. Yes, that is very true, but there are some subjects which really require an expert. So for example, uh, if it's something to do, let's say with religious matters. Eh? So if it's a religious matter, you may want to depend more on um, somebody who is a religious leader, like a pastor, a priest, or a minister, or something like that. So in that situation, that's where you may have um, a lecturer talking, somebody who is speaking and speaking to an, an audience or a large group of people. The last one is interpretive. So um, this is when uh, we listen to somebody, and then we try to make meaning out of their communication. So in this particular situation, it may even require that once the message has been delivered by the sender, the receiver may want to take some time to think about what the sender has, 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 has given out. The best example I'd give that is let's, let us say um, literature, content, literature, books, poems, and plays, and so on and so forth. Those require somebody to first have spent time to ponder and think about it before they can communicate back. So um, that kind of communication can be done, let's say, using pre-record, like for example, the what I wanted to give you as, an, uh, as a sample, uh, giving a pre-recorded lecture, I'll still do that most definitely, hopefully this week, 
where you have a pre-recorded lecture, you give it to students, and then you ask, you give the students time to think about and 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 make try to make meaning out of what they've heard. So this one requires the receiver to first spend time by themselves to think about what is being communicated. Yeah. To think about uh, what is being communicated at a particular time. Now, already you can already see areas where ICT may come in. For example, like I gave you a pre recorded video, a pre recorded audio file, or a written text that you may give to somebody and ask them to read up, go read, and then try to make meaning out of it. Any questions so far? Uh, when you give learners notes, yes, can that go under interpretative? Yes, yes, most definitely it can. Because the learners also have to make meaning out of it. Maybe they make short notes or something about it. Eh? Mm. Yeah. So let us look at um, elements of communication. So um, communication itself, as we were discussing, we said it had elements. We can just have a, a brief brainstorming exercise and we think about what are the thing essentials that need to be there for communication to happen. We've more or less had a brief discussion about it, but mm -hmm. we can try to brainstorm, or brainstorm about it before we pull out um, what the authors say, what the elements are. Uh, for me, I would think, of Siri. Yes. Sender, medium, and receiver. Yes, yeah, that is very good. Julius and Caroline, any thoughts? And the message. Yeah, the message is itself. Yes, that is true. Hello. <laughs> yes, please. I mean, um, sorry, this time I was look, looking for internet and where I am is so disturbing, but I'm yes. following. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, but yes, I got everything. Okay. So I think even the language of communication matters. Yes, that is true. Depending on the message and the people, the receiver. Yeah, the edge group of the people you're talking to. Yes. Okay, let's just have see yeah. what the authors say. So when you look at Shannon, uh, Shannon identified six elements. She first looks at uh, the source, where the information is coming from, where it is being produced. The, so the, the, there is the source and then there is the, the sender. There are two different parts. First, she identifies two different people. The, the source is not necessarily the sender, the one who transmits. Um, and for, for, for here, for example, uh, Aristotle would say this would be the speaker, but the source of information may be different. So for example, the source could be coming, could be from a certain field. A field, maybe somebody is speaking from a religious perspective, another person is speaking from a particular in, as an industry expert. So the, the, the sender may not necessarily be the source. And this makes sense because normally even when we're communicating um, academic content, we cite where we are getting this information. Then there is the channel. And then I think uh, Josephine pointed it out, the media. The medium that is used to transmit um, the, 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 the information, then you have the receiver, and then finally the destination. 
Um, so the, the receiver here, Shannon says, performs the inverse operation that is done by the, the, the transmitter by deconstructing the message from the signal. Then the destination becomes something else. So you see that receiver and the destination can be the same. Yeah, they can be the same. Uh, because if eventually I may, you may send me something, I will, um, my, my brain will try to decode it, to understand it, or to reconstruct it. Then the person of Sheba must take it on and, and say, yes, I've accepted this to be true as it, has, as it was sent. Um, then there is the message. Then the feedback, yeah, the message, and then the feedback. So now you notice the feedback is also a key point. Why? With feedback, we get to know if the receiver has understood what the message was, and if if the feedback comes comes back negative, or rather, in terms of I have not understood, then communication has not happened. Yeah? Then communication has not happened. So here is an image of what, we're, what we've just been talking about. And then you have other writers. They also give other points, but Shannon gives the basics, eh? those six elements. Now, we all strive as teachers, we all strive to ensure that we are good communicators. So how do we, what are some of the characteristics? The first is sharing information, yeah? The first is sharing information. Um, I remember one time, one, one, of, one of the teachers, one of the lecturers in the Faculty of Education, he was giving, they were giving a small workshop on teaching and learning and he said that most of, the teachers, you insist that I want to cover the syllabus, I want to cover the syllabus. And in the process of hurrying to cover the syllabus, you actually cover the syllabus. That means you, you go too quickly that that student don't actually take get what it is you are trying to communicate. Yeah. So the important thing is to share the information that the information is widely dispersed and it is clearly understood whether you're sharing it in verbal terms, in terms of text, in terms of images, that every single person has gotten a clear picture. Discuss feelings, hmm? how people feel about something. You know, um, for me at first, this was a key point that I didn't understand, but um, you know, we're in a household of, we are, my, my, me and my siblings, we are only girls. Eh? And as girl, as, as individuals, we have different characters. You may find a sibling who really focuses on facts, another sibling who focuses on feelings. And I feel this, I feel that the feelings are actually very important to address. We may assume it's just spewing out facts, but how somebody feels about something. Um, if you're passing on information that maybe make somebody question their religion, question their cultural beliefs, things like that to address them. Managing persuasion, yeah? Trying to get people into a, into a certain viewpoint. Eh? Now for me, when I'm especially, um, um, when I'm talking to my nieces and nephews, when it comes to religion, you know, when you're talking to young people, they usually have a lot of questions or things like, oh, but, why doesn't God give you this when you ask for it? And you know, things like that. And trying to manage that persuasion to let them know who God is, you know, in, in the clearest terms possible without pointing him out as being this one who is ready to, to strike them down. Trying to manage that persuasion. I've, I've, I've noticed that when myself and my siblings are trying to commun communicate to young people about faith following social rituals, eh? trying to understand the way people communicate, especially when you're teaching in a classroom. Of course, as teachers, you are in a different age group or age bracket as your students. 
but you can't and as much as you are at, at a higher level you can't neglect the social rituals that exist among the young um i remember i remember at the beginning of the class i was telling you how i had a very negative attitude towards social media so now i'm in a household where my siblings my sisters have their their children and many of them are teenagers and they are really into social media instagram it's snapchat whatever it is all of that TikTok. pardon they love tiktok uh-huh tiktok now mm. here i am I'm, i have a completely negative attitude but of course with time i had realized this is their world and you know there are times they say oh auntie shepa can we use your phone can we put snapchat so we can you know on your phone this is something me as a person i have zero interest in but however because these are your nieces and nephews and you wish to communicate at up to a certain point up to their same level you allow it eh? so also understanding those social rituals using imagination yeah using imagination especially for things that are unknown use imagination to relate what it is that you're trying to persuade them uh, to, to believe or to understand just as their uh, their good characteristics for communication they are also barriers things that hinder communication or that can distort a message that you're trying that is that is that is trying to be conveyed first would be inadequate inadequate uh, verbal communication skills now especially you can see it among the young people um they they are very much influenced by social media and the the, the, the language that is used there so sometimes they may say something and it gets lost in translation somewhere there when you have contradictory verbal and non verbal messages and noise now here especially when we think about cultural differences um i'll, I'll just i'll tell you a story that i told i've told several of my classes this story was told to me i remember it was told to me um by a young man who was telling me about an american company that went to japan to um to launch their their yogurt their their brand of yogurt to the japanese market so like any good company they first got a sample group of people from the japanese uh, society and gave them samples of their yogurt they would then at the end they would ask them do you like it and oh each member of the japanese in the in the sample group they would bow their heads and smile um they brought the second flavor they asked them do you like it they bowed their head and smiled like that for all of them then this company puts the yogurt on the market and complete failure nobody bought the, the yogurt nobody oh my so, god the gentleman who was telling me the story was telling me the story where there was a, a young japanese lady there so this man who got frustrated he asked her why can't you people just say no if you don't like something and this Instead young lady, of bowing yeah she she laughed she laughed and she said you know in japan it's very rude to say i don't like something so there is a way unless you understand their culture there is a way they they, they express um, their dislike without without necessarily telling you no <laughs> uh, so anyway that is uh, um. yeah, that is those are some of the things that can get lost in translation oh my dear me it's starting to rain sorry <laughs> I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Can you increase my volume?
so some of the causes of communication breakdowns, um, we have external communication barriers. So for example, right now we have rain going on outside, it may disrupt my network and you know anything can happen. Uh, you have external communication bar internal communication barriers. Uh, my network can break down, I may fall sick, anything where I may lose interest, or you may lose interest in what I'm saying. A failure to listen, failure to clarify comments, um, childhood teachings. There are so many. You can list quite a number of them. Eh? Now, when we are, uh, we may have challenges communicating with classical cultures. In that example I gave you, um, you may find uh, some things we say. Like the case of Japan, where they simply bow their head and smile, and I was telling you, no, I really don't like what you have given. Uh, your accent can disrupt the topics of conversation. The certain topics which are taboos, a slang, like especially with young people, and certain cultures have particular slang. For example, um, Nigeria has the pidgin English. You have the formal and informal language, the tone you use, the gestures, um, physical space and contact, communication style, dress and appearance, gender, and so on and so forth. Eh? Do you have any questions so far? Any questions? Sorry, I can't hear. Hello, is there any question? Doctor, we are good to go. Ah, I can't hear anything. Eh? But we can hear you. We, we are, we are, Pardon? Okay. I'm fine. I'm saying for, for my side, I don't have. Okay, okay. Let me uh, let me just continue. Yes. So we have some com communicative activities, especially when you're working in groups. So the communicative activities help to promote uh, communication, especially in the classroom, and encourages learners and, and, and students to speak with all groups to speak um, together. Sorry, sorry. So we have different classroom communication activities. Eh? And we have different strategies which we can use uh, for effective communication. So just some of the simple ones before I go to the strategies that can help in good communication. Number one, maintain a pleasant tone as you speak. Vary your speech. Choose your words carefully and make sure to pronounce your words clearly. Use I messages rather than you messages. Uh, use a person's name when you're speaking to them. Uh, use the appropriate non-verbal cues. Eh? Um, ask meaningful questions. Choose the appropriate time. That when, you, when you're interacting with students, make sure you give equal time to all students. Of course, this can be quite difficult, especially if you have huge numbers. Acknowledge when somebody raises their hand or when somebody says something, if somebody asks a question, thank them for the question. Give positive feedback. Um, think first of the students, rather than if, if they, they, they rather than their disability, maybe they may not be 
the quickest thinker in class and so on and so forth, address an individual student directly. Encourage them rather than correct them. So for example, things like um, first give the good points you have, you would start about their question or their answer, then encourage them to improve on something else. Now, we want to see um, how especially we can encourage communication within groups. Within groups, if you're going to have communication in a group, make sure that these positions have been filled. Yeah, number one, there should be a group leader. Yeah, each group must have a group leader. There must be a reporter, somebody who keeps track of um, the discussion. The writer then would put um, text note of what has been uh, said, and then the consensus builder who ensures that they keep summarizing and bringing together everything that has been discussed. The last one is the wild card, the one who helps out the leader in case of anything. Now, there are different uh, uh, group work strategies you can use. One of them is jigsaw. So the jigsaw strategy is when you have a huge amount of information that you want your students to, um, to, to go and research about and discuss. So what the teacher would do is get this information, break it down into equal portions. Yeah, and distribute it equal, equal, equal portions for each for each group. Eh? Then the teacher will assign each member of the group a portion of the assignment. The students get the materials and pair with another person of the same assignment. They will read about it, make points. The teacher will check on their work. Then the individuals return to the groups and present what they have. So you find the work which has been so huge is broken up into small bits and, and distributed and then people pair themselves up eh? and they go through this work. The second is gallery. So here you get students within a classroom. So you divide them up by telling them, let's say each student picks a number, one, two, three, four. Then the ones will go off together, the twos will go off together, the, the threes like that. Eh? So in these groups, the teacher gives instruction. Once the time is, they get instruction on something to be discussed. Once the time is done, the students all come together then they go back to their original groups and try and explain what they've discovered. Yeah? Within that specific group. Then you have the inside out circle. So here you have two circles, an inner circle, as you see here, and an outer circle. So questions can be given to either the inner circle or the outer circle. So let us say the question is given to the outer circle. The questions, the students will ask the questions to the inner circle. After each question, they, then they, they add the inner circle students answer. Then they will rotate the process. And they will ask those, the others, the start question. Once the cycle is complete, now you, you find that um, those in the inner circle first discussed, then they gave answer to those in the outer circle. Then those of the outer circle discussed the, another question, gave the answer to the inner circle. Then you have what is called placement, which is a bit more complex. So here, what you what is like, for example, what we see here on the piece of paper. You have a piece of paper that has been divided into um, portions. Yeah. You have different portions. Then you place students in groups and give each group a topic. Now each each portion has its topic. So the students independently independently work on each section. 
and then they turn back and write down in their section eh, what they've discovered about their independent findings. Take an example. Let us say um, you give students a question maybe on volcanoes and they go out and discuss the different topics on volcanoes which you have faced. Then they come and begin to write yeah, in the different sections about volcanoes. At the end, the main ideas are the ones which come in the inner circle, the ones that each one has actually discovered and those that are independent are in the outer section. So you realize that by the end of it, the students have found their common ground, but they've also discovered other areas that they, they may not have known that each, each, each other member, other individual members may have discovered. So you find now here, complete democracies found under full discussion of a topic is, is covered by everyone. I think this is the last one, graffiti. So as the image demonstrates, you place a question or a problem on a theme or a theme on a sheet of paper. Now let's say some, this is something like that. Eh? Then each group gets an assignment on different sheets. So each member of the, of the each member that, that will write what, is, what they have discovered, and then they'll come and place it on this generic theme. So what you have is a kind of a huge picture where each member, each different original group comes and pastes on the general paper of what is to be discussed. Now, in doing this, this may be done in a physical classroom, but it can also be done using ICT. You remember the the, the, the platform, for example, we used uh, Padlet. Padlet can help discussions like this, yeah? So even at a distance, when you have your class with people being separated by space and time, you can have discussions like this, eh? but online, yeah? You can have a discussion like placement, you can have even a discussion like inside outside circle using a discussion forum. So all of that, all of these are possible even with ICT. So what are some of the skills that are emphasized? Number one, social, social skills, leadership skills, communication, fluency, decision making, problem solving, and so on and so forth. So here are just some of the literature you can go through to help us um, understand this more. Do we have any questions so far? Sorry, I'm trying to rush a bit because my battery is already a warning, but do we have any questions so far? No, thank you. You have been very clear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm marathoning. Why are you laughing? I try to marathon through so that- <laughs> Marathoning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's okay. You've been clear. Recording. So um, <laughs> anyway, I will I will post this video also on um, this recording on uh, Moodle, and uh, we can we can have uh, we shall also have our recorded lecture somewhere in the middle of this week. Eh? This time I promise. Before before you leave, Madam. Yes, please. I have a problem. I can't access Moodle anymore. And I don't know who can help me. Um, okay. Can I send on your group somebody in the WhatsApp group, somebody who can help you? Eh? I'll send yes, you his email. Yes, will let me know. Yes, his email and phone number. Thank you very much. Okay, you're most welcome. Mm. Okay, uh, let me see get off before um, this laptop embarrasses me and switches <laughs> off. <laughs> okay.